Uh, open your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4. We are, we're in like in the book of Acts in chapter 4, verse 26. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. And they were uh, trying to silence the disciples in verse 29. Lord, behold their threatenings. They're so threatened by us talking truth, telling the truth, preaching about the Lord. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. And that's the same thing that we pray. Give us boldness and wisdom in this hour. <laughs> Last week they didn't like my message too well. They kind of killed it dead in the water. If you have not had a chance, go listen to that one. Because that's uh, when they take them down or try to silence you, you're right on the target. I hate to say that, but we're living in a day of uh, they want the truth silenced. And we're just going to keep on speaking what we're supposed to speak until we can't anymore, right? So here in 1 Timothy 4, it says, Now the Spirit ex speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and to doctrines of devils. So what are some of these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? Let's read on. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And what else are they going to do? Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. We're going to hit that one today. Commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursed up in the words of faith, and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So here we see Paul is speaking about some end time laws. I believe that a lot of people don't understand what the end time laws are going to be. They don't understand the Noahide laws. And I can't really get into too much of that, but study that on your own, research it on your own. But he's speaking about the end time laws that will say stop eating meat, meats or eventually there will be a ban on meats or the meats will disappear or there's going to be a heavily taxation on it. Now it's going to take some time because you can't just change things overnight but we see this already happening in our world today and we're going to talk a little bit about what first of all what's the problem. Now I know in Sweden this is already big over there. Uh, they're totally I have some friends over there, so a year ago they were telling me what was go going on over there, and some people are going to love this. They're going to love the new meat, and some people are going to hate it. And I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just going to report on facts, okay? I just want you to know what they're saying the problem is, and what, their, what the reaction is, and what the solution is, okay? So the problem, they say, that meat gives off greenhouse gas emissions. Too many cow fluffs. The solution, cultivating animal cells, okay, this is how they do this. They cultivate animal cells in a lab to produce meat products rather than slaughtering animals. They say could be a way to reduce the environmental burden of agriculture. Meat grown from Animal cells, known as lab-grown lab -grown meats, promises to save the planet. Now, this is from an article. This was a, a report published in May of 23, 2019. And it says, and this is a scientist holding his lab-grown burger. Back in 2013, the world watches food critics tucked in the first ever lab-grown burger. The small pink patty uh, prized out of a petri dish and fried in front of the media 
was proof it was possible to grow safe and edible meat without slaughtering a single animal. There was just one problem. The patty had taken two years and over $300,000 to produce. $300,000 to produce. But since then, the cost of producing this high-tech, this is high-tech meat, has plummeted. In January 2016, I'm not going to name the, the companies, produced a cultured meatball for around $1,000. And today's startups and nonprofit organizations are working on lab-grown animal products, including pork, chicken, turkey, fish, milk, egg whites, gelatin, and even leather. So this was an article that I found. I wish I had the date on it, but I do not have the date. But it says, this is from uh, New York, and it was a CNN article. It said, soon Americans are going to be able to try chicken that comes directly from chicken cells rather than a chicken. And then it said that the USDA gave uh, this meat, it's called upside down uh, something or other. I won't finish it. I'm having a hard time because if I quote truth, I get flagged for saying things that are truth. This is how difficult it's getting to share things right now. So this upside down, can't name it, uh, meat company uh, got the green light to start producing and selling their lab grown or cultivated chicken products in the United States. And it says you should be able to get a taste of it at a restaurant. Well, let me tell you, I have had a taste of this at a restaurant. Uh, yeah, I said, this is not chicken. I'd send it back and they go, they didn't deny it wasn't. So what is it? What is lab grown meat? Okay. And where does it come from? I think if you are going to eat it, whether you want it or don't, it's your choice, whether you like it or don't, don't judge other people. This is, this is an educational video. Lab grown meat or cultivated cell-based meat is meat that's developed from animal cells and grown with the help of nutrients like amino acids in massive bioreactors. This happens in a production facility that looks a lot like a brewery. Giant vats. I'm not going to read the whole thing. When the meat is ready, I wonder how they know when it's ready, but when the meat is ready, Companies collect it from the bioreactors and move it along the processing line. They say this protein looks a lot like minced chicken. <laughs> These cells are gathered from a fertilized chicken egg and are stored in cell banks and can be used for at least 10 years. Fresh. Talking fresh, aren't we talking? Yeah, they still need the chicken. They still need it. Holy cow. Yeah. Animal cells can come from animal biopsies or even from feathers, among other sources. Animal agriculture is responsible for a significant amount, a significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions, which of course, contribute to climate change. Just reading what they're saying. Overhauling that system would ease the burden on the planet. <laughs> Just read an article, folks. So it cost over $300,000 to develop the first lab-grown burger, but it's uh, gone down a lot now. It's, it's a lot cheaper now. Okay, so yay, rah, rah. And I found another article I'm going to share here. This is probably, if you can find it, it's called The Problem Reaction Solution Paradigm Unraveling Hidden Agendas in Modern Crises. It's decoding the Hegelian dialectic in contemporary contexts. Now, I've taught on this before. But as an article, I think this is probably the best simplified way I can share with you what really goes on in our world. The problem reaction solution theory, often intertwined with the Hegelian dialectic, 
is a framework frequently used to scrutinize major global, global events and policies. This analytical lens suggests that powerful groups or entities engineer a problem anticipating a public reaction that allows them to offer a pre-planned solution. These solutions often serve hidden interests, whether they be financial gains, increased power, or expanded control. Follow the money, control and power. I added that, it's not in the article. So how do we understand this? We understand that we have a problem. We have cows that are just letting off too much gas, right? <laughs> They've been doing it for years, but now it, it's, it's, now it's, a it's a problem now, yeah. And the chickens, you know, the chickens, they got uh, a flu. So now we're gonna have to do these tests and we're gonna have to test all animals. They could be uh, symptomatic free, so they could still have it. Uh, haven't we went through this before? And hasn't this caused a major problem before with people that are taking these tests that are not real tests? I'm just, just throwing out the problem here. So the problem, the first step involves creating or manipulating a crisis. The crisis could range from economic downturns, health emergencies, to social unrest. And why all of a sudden are they allowing people to go and steal from certain places and they're not, you know, penalizing them? Oh, you can steal up to $2,000 now without being charged. This is problem, reaction, solution. They're creating a problem because there's something else they want to implement. If you know what's going on, you're going to know all about these IDs that are coming and they're, all these different things, which is problem, reaction, solution. And of course, they keep letting the problem get bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, everyone starts crying out for a solution. And then they give you the solution that they had all along of what they wanted, which would have never been able to happen unless the crisis happened first, right? Often, these problems are either exaggerated or even orchestrated to create a sense of fear and urgency among the public. If there's one thing that we need to do in these end times, it's not to fear because the enemy uses fear to weaponize everything they want to do. If you get someone scared enough, they're going to do whatever they're told. God has not given us a spirit of fear, so we know the enemy uses fear. So do not fear. Regardless of what happens and what they're doing, we keep our eyes on the Lord, we're trusting God, right? And if you can see through a lot of their Hegelian dialectic things, you can see what they're doing. I'm not saying some of these things don't become a crisis and those, some of these things are not real, but we have to know who's behind these real crises. Then there's the reaction. The natural response to a crisis is a demand for a resolution, a resolution. In this stage, the public reacts predictably with a mix of fear, outrage, and a plea for help. Media often plays a critical role in shaping and amplifying these reactions. And we all could say propaganda. Propaganda, the media, remember the enemy is the prince of the power of the air. Right? So now the solution. The entity that created or amplified the problem steps in with a solution. These solutions typically grant more power to authorities, erode civil liberties, or transfer wealth and resources from the public to the elite. I don't know if you saw that last night, but our ruling authorities have just pledged America to get behind the Ukraine war for 10 more years. Did you see that? So where's your tax money going to be going in the next 10 years? And don't you think some of that should be taking care of America? and the roads, and the things, and the people, and all this stuff. Okay, so transferring wealth and resources from the public to the elite. The critical aspect here is that these solutions often serve the interest of a select few while being presented as the best or only way to resolve the crisis. And we learned from Germany years ago, they always will say, this is for your safety. And now they've added, this is for the environment. 
This is for the safety of the planet. Right? So who gains? Who's gaining from this? In the case of economic crises, bailout packages often favor big corporations, leaving the ordinary citizen bearing the brunt of the aftermath. In health crises, certain pharmaceutical companies may stand to gain immensely from the panic through sales of their products, often supported by mandates. What do we say? Follow the money. So what do we do? This is a call for vigilance. This is a day that we have to question. We have to think. So many people are just not thinking and they're just operating through fear and they just do everything that they're supposed to be doing without, where, where is this coming from? What are you putting in your body? Where is this coming from? So in understanding the problem reaction solution theory, it becomes vital for citizens to remain vigilant, question the narratives presented to them. It's okay to question things. Okay, now is this lab-grown meat going to be nutritious? Are there any side effects? If you're taking such and such, are there side effects? Uh, watch a few commercials and they will tell you this could cause shortness of breath, diarrhea, passing out, you could have temporal loss of memory, blah, 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 blah. Is it worth it? Now they're doing this weight loss <laughs> drug and this girl, <laughs> She was just talking, she said, she, it, it caused her to have no control over her bowels. So she's going out to eat and all of a sudden she just poops her pants. I'm like, okay, do you really want to lose weight that bad? <laughs> what are the side effects? I've got to lighten you up a little bit here. What are the side effects for some of this stuff? We've got to start questioning some of the side effects because this is what the enemy's trying to do. Get your eyes on this goal but you have no idea what it's doing to you. Right. No? If you want to take it, you've considered the risks, then that's up to you. No condemnation for you. Everybody's got to do what they feel is right for them. And none of us can really tell you what to do. But if you research things and you still don't mind having the side effects, then go for it. Some people say, well, my health is in danger and I have to take that. Well. That's not for us to tell you what to do. But I'm just saying, you got to check the side effects because this girl was not real happy with the side effects. Uh, and it kept happening to her, so she eventually had to quit. So it becomes vital for citizens to remain vigilant and question the narratives presented to them. Question, what could happen to me if I take this? What are the side effects of this so-called, it's for my safety, it's good for the environment, uh, how nutritious is it? Uh, I mean, there's, there's battles on both sides about killing beef and giving them antibiotics. And our whole food system right now, I would have to agree with you, is messed up. But what do we do? There's a lot of things we cannot do. We can't do anything about it. But some of these things, we just don't have to touch it, right? Like the processed foods, a lot of these snacks, the Agent Orange and all these different things that are in our... Our snacks were given to our kids. Uh, check for the side effects and check for the ingredients, which most of you, I'm sure, do. Scrutinizing who benefits from these solutions, both financially and in terms of power dynamics, is crucial. The theory prompts us to look beyond the surface. In other words, the cover story. Doc, remember Dr. Richard Day, I've talked about him for years now. He talked about there's always two sides. One, they want to tell you what the public will receive. And the real reason for implementing their plan is for what their real agenda is. Because it can't just come out with the agenda. They have to put a cover story on top of it. So consider the possibility of orchestrated events designed to manipulate public perception and action. While not every crisis is the product of this dialect, the theory serves as a reminder of the potential for manipulation and the quest for power and control. What is happening to our food supply? What is happening? Well, what is happening is the reset. They are resetting things. They are resetting the infrastructure. They're resetting things. The whole world is upside down of what God made it and what 
we know what's happening. All my other messages up to this. As citizens, staying informed, ask critical questions, demand transparency. If you're going to give your children something, and I wish I'd have known this, ask your doctor, would you take this? Would you give this to your child? Or what are the side effects? What are the ingredients in here? What, what could happen if we take this and we're having a side effect? Well, most people don't, you know, it's, it's been given to me, my doctor, it's gotta be safe, right? Well, they're recalling things all the time. I just heard today they were recalling or they were talking about uh, some kind of a cholesterol medicine they're saying isn't as good as they thought it was and they're actually going 100% against what they did say at one time, uh, that it causes, it actually could cause you to live maybe four, four uh, days longer if you took this, whatever it was. I, I can't say it. I know what it is, but I can't say it. Everything right now, you're gonna have to read through the lines to understand what we're saying. So as citizens staying informed, asking critical questions and demanding answers, what are the side effects? If you're going to eat it, you need to know what's in it. And now they don't even tell you a lot of times what's in it. And essential steps in safeguarding democratic values and individual freedoms in the fake face of orchestrated crises. And remember, they loved to t make uh, chaos. And they like their chaos because out of chaos, that comes their new order, that comes their new system. So they like all this cre created chaos and now the police standing down in a lot of different states, different things that are happening that we never ever dreamed would be happening in our day. So what do you do? We have to trust God. We have to stay vigilant. We have to study to show ourselves approved. Even the people that are not born again are understanding that a lot of stuff is going on right now. There used to be a time when you talk to people and they, they were like, uh, now they're like, no, we're in trouble. Our countries are in trouble. We're going, the last ditch effort, what they usually do is pull out a war. And if they want a war, they're gonna have a war. There's nothing we can do to stop wars, which we know, if you look throughout history, we'll see when they wanna bring certain things down and build other things up, what do they do? They pull out a war, right? World War I, World War II, and now we're seeing more conflict in our world than we've ever seen for a long time. But we can't get into fear. We have to keep our minds stayed on Jesus because that's what gives us peace, that he will lead us, he'll guide us, and he'll protect us. And he shows us these things. So he shows us what to consent to and what to decline. And this is something you're gonna have to make up your own mind and there's some things you can't even make your kids decide. They're old enough now, after 13, 14, 15, they make up their own minds, right? So as much as you know and you want them to understand Sometimes if they aren't studying, if they're too busy working, just they're not going to get a lot of the things you're getting because you're studying. And they're just trying to survive and make it with all the bills and all the insurances that are going up and all the things that are happening. But remember, the enemy always uses fear, and we have to try to stay out of fear. He's given us promises 365 times, fear not, that we are not to fear. We're, the only thing we are to fear is to fear the Lord, and that's a healthy reverence, fear the Lord. Because fear is used to motivate and drive public opinion and policies. Is this really about saving the planet? I want to give you a couple of scriptures here in closing. Revelations 18, 23. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, and by their sorceries were all nations deceived. All nations deceived. That word sorcery there means pharmakia. For by their pharmakia were all nations deceived. They're ramping up another one of these things. Um, is it going to happen this year or next year? I don't know, but they are ramping it up. We know we're seeing this and all of a sudden. Uh, and do you question it? Yeah, I question it. I question everything now. I used to trust everything and everyone. Now I don't. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, whose side are they on? Are they controlled opposition? Are they leaven of Herod? And this is a point too, when we go more and more into politics, don't fight over politics. I've tried to share as much as I can. Some people agree, some people disagree. The main thing is if we're Christians, we still love each other. Some people are never gonna come out and see the truth on certain things because they don't want to see evil. They don't want to see what's really happening. And 
Jesus told us in the end times there's going to be great deception. So the main thing is with us, we're not going to get divided over it. Let these certain people, if they, we all have unlearning to do and nobody has all the answers, right? But don't fall into the enemy's trap of, of fighting and dividing. My family, there's five of us. Uh, there, we all disagree on a lot of different things. And sometimes I'll talk to one of my sisters and she, her and I agree on nothing probably because she just regurgitates the, the news and tells me what it says. And I, I already have figured that one out, but I don't bring it up to her. It's not worth it. She's older than me. I want to honor her. She's not been healthy. But the most important thing is we get along. We're still brothers and sisters. We're still friends. That doesn't mean I compromise, but I let her talk and I don't have to win. We don't have to win, right? But I don't want to be deceived either. Now, in the last one, Revelations 18, God's going to give rewards unto thy servants. Now, this is the other thing. How do we live through this? Keep your eyes on Jesus and remember, he's going to reward you. We might not get rewarded in this earth, but there will come a time where you will be rewarded for what you're doing. You're giving, you're loving, you're serving, you're serving him. I served in a church for 28 years and I got no pension, nothing. I got absolutely nothing. And uh, I look back and I was like, wow. But you know what? My reward is from the Lord. My trust is in the Lord. I don't trust in this world system, but we live in the world. So there's certain things we have to do but our rewards come from God. If not, you're going to get bitter. You're going to get angry. And you're, the people you love and they don't return it to you, you're going to be mad at them. When you serve, don't do it as unto a man. Do it as unto the Lord. And unto the Lord, your return will come. God sees it all. So he's going to give you a reward for your life on the earth. God's going to give rewards unto thy servants and the prophets and to the saints of them that fear his name. What do we fear? We fear his name. Don't fear what the enemy can do. Fear the Lord. Because eternity is a long time, right? What's this life? It's but a vapor. Maybe 90 years for a lot of people. Maybe not. But then comes the time that we receive our Lord's for, what, for our rewards for what we've done in our body. And he said, The prophets to the saints and them that fear his name, small and great, and shouldest. Now here's the, the judgment. Some are going to be rewarded, and then there's judgment. And I want you to see what it says here. He's going to destroy them which destroy the earth. So why would the devil want to destroy the earth? Because he wants to copy God. God got rid of all the bad people, right, through the flood. And God said he'll never have another flood. That's why he put the, re the real reason for the rainbow in there. He said, I, I have an everlasting covenant with you. But the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He's been a murderer from the beginning. And there's wicked people out there. And this is the thing, I think, when you get saved, you think everybody's so wonderful and everyone's so sweet. And everyone... No, they're still the wicked. And the battle and the war is between good and evil. And even though you can't imagine the evil, there's a lot of hidden things going on in our countries that people have no idea what's going on. But there's things that are surfacing now. Things are coming into the light. And so you just ha we have to trust the Lord that those that are trying to destroy the earth through what they're doing to our food, to our air, to our water, to all the different things, he said, he will destroy those that destroy the earth. You can't get all freaked out. You can't get mad. You can't get angry. You have to trust God that, Lord, you started this. <laughs> we got born into this fight. Right? You got born. You didn't plan on all this stuff, but this was the battle between good and evil. And so we chose to serve the Lord, right? And this is a time that we're going to have to stand. We're, we're coming into the days of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where we've got to pay a price. We've got to speak truth. There's a price to tell the truth. And us that are trying to do that now, the price is losing friends. The price is losing finances. The price is not being uh, popular, all the different things, but the price also is walking with the Lord. And read those scriptures that no one wants to preach about, that if they hated him, they'll also hate you. They're not, this world is not going to love you for serving the Lord and just speaking truth. This world is going to want you to regurgitate 
everything that's on the news, all the narratives, except all these different things that are coming in, all these different genders, what are there, 300 now? I mean, how can you make up this stuff? And they want, you know, all these different philosophies and theories and all this. It's a bunch of chaos and it's a bunch of nonsense. But we have to still serve the Lord, having done all to stand and try to do the best we can to raise our grandchildren. They're going to have to really live in some of this if, if certain things keep continuing. Who knows what the world war is going to be? Who knows? None of us really know how this is all going to pan out in the next five, ten years. But we do know one thing. They have agendas. No matter what happens, they have their agendas. They have their sustainable goals of what they're going to do and their, the things that they want. It doesn't matter who does what, they will have their agendas. And this is many times people think it's the tribulation period that this is what the enemy wants to do. Steal, kill, and destroy. So Father, we thank you that we won't be afraid, but we're aware of what's happening to our food. It's sad to see what's happening to our wonderful countries, our beautiful countries, but there's still very much to be thankful for. Thankful for our friends. Thank you for divine connections. Thank you for the things you've given us. Thank you for the time still that we have and the places that we can go and still enjoy. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, the backup channel. Living in His Presence Church on Rumble. Living in His Presence Church on BitChute. And at the livinginhispresence.org website, where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio MP3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main webpage, and on the top right is a Give button. Thank you, and see you next time.